Hello and welcome to another episode of Blender Absolute Beginner Tutorials. Today we're going to talk about rigging or armature or bones or whatever you want to call it. And what it does is basically we put a skeleton on a model, whether it be a human or organic or nature or chair, anything. You put a skeleton in there that allows you to move certain parts of the mesh as a group and more fluidly so that it looks more natural and you don't have to go in and move things vertex by vertex. For example, if this guy had to take a drink or wave goodbye or something like that, you'd have to, in your animation, you'd have to move every single mesh and it would it would kind of be a mess and kind of be a pain. So what we're going to do is put a skeleton in him and group parts of the mesh to that skeleton so that we can just move it as a whole. First thing you need to do is get a mesh to start with. And this is pretty much the simple person we worked on earlier. Uh, he doesn't have feet, if you'll notice, and he doesn't have the hat. And his head is just a round sphere. So if you don't have this model in particular, do not worry. Check, under the, check in the description under this video for the link to download this Blender file. This is the exact one I'm using right now. Um, just opened it and you should be looking at the same thing when you open this this file. Um, so first thing we need to do is we need to add that skeleton. And the way we add the skeleton is in object mode. Don't be in edit mode because if you're in edit mode it'll add the skeleton as part of the simple person object. The skeleton needs to be its own separate object. So uh, make sure everything's deselected. I don't think that really matters, but just do Shift A in object mode, armature, single bone. And the bones in this look like kind of like upside down diamonds, if you will. You can kind of see the shape here. But to put it inside this person is going to be a little difficult, so would like to see it inside the person. So we're going to switch to wireframe mode by hitting Z or Z, depending on where you're from. So in wireframe mode we're gonna make this right around his pelvis and we're going to make sure not just in one view but again make sure in several views that it's inside of him otherwise you're gonna have problems so make sure from all angles that this bone is right inside of him and it doesn't have to be perfect don't spend all the time in the world making it exactly right but once it's inside of the mesh then go into edit mode with it selected and we can edit this bone. We're going to first of all select just the top and then grab it and bring it straight up to right about where his arms will come out of it. So shoulder height is what I'd say, a little lower than shoulder height. And then with that selected again we're going to extrude other bones off of it just like we could extrude parts of a mesh. So hit E and we're going to go in the X direction and we're going to extrude part of the upper arm and then we're going to extrude out the forearm just like that and we're going to do this on both sides and again it doesn't have to be perfect I mean if you want it to be perfect I wouldn't blame you but mine's just for demonstration so mine's not going to be super amazing. We're not going to give him a skull. We're just going to hook his head up to his neck on this neck bone, I believe. We are going to give him kind of a hip so that his his legs can move somewhat independently of each other. And then we have one leg and finally the last leg. And there we go. So now what we want to do is while we're in edit mode, we want to go through and we want to name these bones. Right now they have just generic names like bone and then a number. So to keep track for later, this will be especially important, we want to give them names. Not in the object name. The object name we can name whatever we want. But that's for the whole object. We want to come over to the bone property. And right here, this name is what that unique bone will be called. So that one is going to be right leg and this one is going to be left leg and make sure you hit enter after you type in the name or sometimes it won't stick um, so then we want left hip 
And bear with me for a second as I go through and rename these. I promise it will be worth it. The backbone I'm going to call spine. And then we'll call this one right upper arm. And we'll call this one right forearm. And this one left upper arm. And this one left forearm. And finally, we'll do the neck, just call it neck. Perfect. Now if you go back to object mode, you can see the whole skeleton and how it kind of fits in his body. Again, just double check that it fits inside of his skeleton, where his skeleton should be inside of the mesh. Otherwise, I've done it before where the skeleton is actually like offset of the mesh and that causes some problems when you try and move things. So what you want to do in object mode is to now some way merge the skeleton and the mesh together. And what we're going to do is what we did with the hat in the previous tutorials is the parenting feature. So what you want to do is select the mesh first and then select the skeleton. I think I got that right. Then do control P and say with automatic weights. And what this will do is automatically determine the weighting or which parts of the mesh will be affected by which bones and how much. So it'll try and automatically determine that based on the bone's position relative to the mesh and the bone size. Automatic weights, in my experience, which is very limited, does not do a great job. But we can show you what it does do. So once you select automatic weights, you could be done if it did a great job. But what we're going to do is see that it didn't do a great job. Go ahead and select just the skeleton in object mode. And there's this mode, pose mode, that you'll want to go to. Select pose mode. Select any bone. And hit R to rotate or G to move. And you can see that as I move his right forearm, his head is distorted as well as his spine and his hip a little bit. Likewise, if I move his left leg, rotate it, his right leg moves too, as does his spine and some of his shoulders. So while it did an okay job, he still looks like Gumby and he still is not really good. So we're going to go into object mode again. We're going to reselect the mesh and we're going to go into edit mode on the mesh. Now once you're in edit mode on the mesh come over to the properties window and click on the object data this upside down triangle shape and you can see underneath it all a list of all of these bones that we did and if we hadn't named them we would have literally no idea which was which and I think I have some left over from before that hopefully won't mess things up. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll click spine, make sure nothing's selected here, and just click select. And everything that is selected now is what the spine bone will move and change. Personally, that's way too much. I'm going to hit remove so now none of it is affected by the spine bone moving and I'm going to come in and I'm going to select exactly what I want which is just the mesh around the spine bone and I'm going to click assign now I can select and deselect to show that just that is that's all that's affected by the spine and again with the right upper arm click select and that's why his head was being distorted with his right upper arm because it's part of that. It's affected by that. Actually, this is the upper arm here. So I'm going to hit remove, deselect all of that, and just select what I want to be affected by that right upper arm. And hit assign. And then select and deselect to verify. And I'm going to go through the rest of these and save you the time and try and fix them. I'll try and speed this up a little bit and I will be right back.
Okay, I've finished, and now I want you to, I want to point out a couple of things. First of all, the neck bone. I did the whole head and the neck too, and you probably saw in that clip I ran into some trouble and had to fix that. You guys shouldn't run into that trouble because that was from playing around with the previous skeleton, and if this is your first skeleton, it won't ever happen. So, um, let me just show you now what the skeleton looks like. If we go to object mode, select the skeleton, go to pose mode, and then let's select, let's say, both of his arms. And we'll turn him back onto normal surface, not wireframe. You can actually see some of the skeleton sticking through him. That's okay. That doesn't show up in a render. Um, so let me just say rotate, and now he'll wave to you. You can see it's not perfect. His hands will twist and do weird things, but for the most part, he can just wave. And again, like I said, this is a very simple, simple, um, what's it called? Simple skeleton. So he can do things like tilt his head or, you know, like twist his head around in a circle. He can, say, kick up his leg. And we don't have to move all of the vertices to do so. So it works out really nicely. Now, let me just try one last thing coming into object mode. You'll notice I had some modifiers. I had, first of all, this is the old armature. I'm going to delete that one. And I'm going to apply that subsurface modifier that was on there but really wasn't doing anything. And now I'm going to come to the skeleton armature pose mode and see if that helps smooth things out at all. Apparently it didn't. So don't do that and you should be fine. Let's see if this fixed it. Hmm. Let's just I messed it up. And there we go. So the problem was that I deleted the wrong modifier and thus disconnected the skeleton. So deleting the right one now, it should be okay. And I'm going to now try what I wanted which is applying that subsurface modifier and seeing if it gives us some additional flexibility, which it really doesn't. So, bottom line is, skeleton's good, but the more detailed you make your skeleton, the more bones you put in there, the better it will be. Also, the more vertices you have and the finer, finer detail you can deal with, obviously the better movement you're going to have. But for now, I think that was a pretty good first introduction to rigging and skeletons. So we'll have this guy wave by and I will see you guys next week.